Hey designers, I am finally back with another video in this personal website redesign series. I kicked this series off about two years ago where I made um, what I called an MVP, like temporary homepage for my site. Um, and that temporary homepage ended up lasting for two whole years until I got around to designing like an actual proper homepage that um, showcased my content in a way that I was really proud of. But I finally made the time for it the other weekend and I have a new homepage all designed. So I wanna walk you through my design process for this new homepage, show you some decisions that I made and um, yeah, show you the final product. Then in the next video in this series, which will be coming very soon, I won't make you have a big long wait for the next one again, I promise. Uh, I'll be showing you how I built out this homepage design in Webflow. So let's get into my design process for my new personal website homepage. So I started this design process like I do for pretty much any uh, design project they work on and that is using the app concepts on my iPad using my Apple Pencil to just sketch some wireframes. So here is just a quick look at some of the ideas that I was sketching. Don't worry if you don't understand them. Wireframes are really just for me to understand. But I was thinking about things like bringing in my navigation um, sidebar that I have on my blog, bringing that onto the homepage, thinking about some overlapping things like a block overlapping the header section. Um, thinking about uh, leading with my content. I really want my homepage to be a hub for my content. Uh, because I'm not searching for a job and not searching for freelance clients, the point of my website is to show people what I do, what I'm working on and get them to like read my posts, watch my videos, that sort of thing. So leading with this read, watch, listen idea of showing the latest pieces of all of my content. Um, that's like the idea that I was coming out with while wireframing. So let's take a look at um, some more understandable versions of this design. Because after wireframing, I moved over to Figma to mock some things up. And I recorded my screen throughout the whole time I was designing. So I thought I'd just walk you through this and uh, point out some of the decisions that I was making. Let's go. Okay, so I started off by bringing over my footer from um, my blog design file, because I knew that I wanted that to be at the bottom of the page. And then um, keeping within the same, like, I, I guess, design system that I've made for my website with these blog cards, um, I thought that I could have a few of them in a row on the homepage, perhaps. Then bringing over the sidebar that uh, I mentioned in the wireframe I wanted to try out, having in there. So, yeah, just using, making use of elements that I've already created before. And here's where I started trying out a photo background for the header because I thought that could look quite cool. This is a personal site. Why not lead with a giant picture of myself, I guess. Uh, what's my thinking there? So I decided I didn't really like this three blog posts beside each other thing um, and thought that maybe I would do an overlapping thing with the, the intro instead. Like I knew I wanted something to overlap on the header space, right? Um, here I'm just making use of Figma's inbuilt photo editing things to make some changes there. Decided that the, the intro overlapping was not the go and that that's where I should actually put the blog post instead. You can see here it's quite quick to mock things up because I have some type styles and everything saved in Figma. Um, here I'm changing the color of the image just to try and make it blend better. I wasn't loving the look of this full page image because I got really used to the nice purple background of my current homepage. And uh, even though I don't want that single homepage anymore, I, I do still like that block color feel. So yeah, that was me trying to just bring a little bit, bit of that in. But yeah, this is looking quite good though. I was, I was quite happy with this. So moved on for now to the rest of the page and thought I'd just like sit and think on that header section a little more. I did some writing before I got into designing. I wrote the copy for my homepage, so I knew that I wanted to have this thoughts on design business and side projects as the heading, for example, of the blog section. This might be really confusing me switching back and forth between files here, but basically I'm uh, stealing things from um, files that I'd designed before. And here I'm just getting a screenshot of a video to, to bring into the page. I really wanted to have um, my latest videos displayed here. And at this stage, I wasn't exactly sure how I would make that happen. Like if I'd have to do it manually or something, I don't know. 
but um, that's what I wanted to try. And spoiler alert, I did figure out a way, so that will come in the building video. This part here, I was trying to, like, I thought maybe I could have links to things at, within a sentence, kind of like I have on my current homepage. Um, trying to bring in some of the block color again to get that, that feel back to it. Wasn't completely loving it though, so I don't know. Here I'm just I'm just trying things out really. When in doubt, add a little pink divider line. <laughs> the sentence thing wasn't working because I felt like um, it wasn't super clear that those were links. And I think it worked on my current homepage because it was the only thing on the page, right? So you were forced to read that sentence. But yeah, I worried that um, things were going to get lost here. Here I'm using Noun Project um, to fetch some icons. I've got a subscription to it and it's super great. You can use all the icons in your project um, when you've got a subscription. And the subscription is very reasonably priced. So I'll leave a link to that um, in the description if you, if you want to check it out. So I've got these little icons for things. And um, sometimes I end up, what I'm doing here with the book is just adding a stroke to it to get it to look the same thickness as the other icons because um, they're not all from the same set, but I do want them to look cohesive, right? So that's what I was doing there. Uh, I thought instead of the sentence, I could have these things split apart like this. And then quickly decided that instead I should go with the same header body copy um, style that I'd used for the video and blog post above. I really should have made a component for my buttons. I'm not sure why I haven't done that yet. <laughs> Here's me trying to decide if this um, should be in a separate block or if it should be grouped in with this content because we can group things in design with the background that they're on you know once you start a different background it sort of starts a new section and here i came up with this idea of to like bring the overlapping feeling that i have on the header with the blog post on it to bring that down to use these boxes in this way um, here's me deciding if i want to do links or buttons and like trying to bring some of that overlappingness to it Trying get a grey background for this to see if see if I like the look of that better. Or maybe I want a white on a grey background, I don't know. This is this is what design is for me most of the time, just duplicating things and changing colours slightly to decide what gives the right feel. Here I wondered if I should just have the icons uh, and not have the little um, clarifier for these ones and ultimately decided that I didn't really like how that looked. <laughs> so I went back to the idea uh, of the buttons. And this is where I also had the idea to bring in more colors. Until then, I'd really just been using my brand color purple. But um, for my blog posts, I have a different color card behind it for different categories. And so, yeah, I thought maybe I should be bringing in um, the other colors to my site more just to make it more fun and also just you know, bring the brand in. So here I decided that I definitely did like the labels being next to the icons here to match in with everything else. And to show my work, I decided that I'm going to bring in some dribble posts. So this is me laying out some dribble shots recently to, to put this in. Deciding that I like it all on the same block color gray background um, and that I should treat my work similarly to how I've treated the content above so bringing in a little icon in order to do that. And then I decided that actually I should move the work further up and um, have that my blog, video and work as the three main blocks and then have this podcast speaking and book as just before the footer as 
like lesser importance on the page. Now I'm going back to working on the header because I still wasn't quite happy with it. Um, so I thought maybe I'd try a photo at the side. Remember, that wasn't one of my wireframes. Thought I'd just give it a go. But it wasn't looking quite right, so I thought maybe it needs to be sort of um, blended into the header more, not taking up an exact half. Don't know. But that wasn't feeling right, because then I couldn't really do the overlapping. It was all feeling a bit too blocky in a way. So instead I decided to move everything down a bit and try to have the photo overlapping the header instead of the blog post. Um, that started feeling a little bit better and I went through a few different photo options for it. <laughs> I did a photo shoot with my friend John um, when I still lived in London, so that's what all these photos are from. And ultimately decided that I liked this one best. <laughs> that I'd bring in the box outline thing into the header section as well. Um, trying different colors, ultimately deciding on the purple because I just love purple. And that's the design I ended up with. So let me just show you in depth, like a little bit slower through the page and point out some things in case that speed designing was a little bit too fast. Okay, so this is the design I ended up with. I changed this to a dark color to match better with this divider line on the menu. Um, I've got the menu at the side, which is how it appears on my blog, which is probably one of my favorite parts on my website before I did this homepage. Um, I really like having this sidebar that sort of like shrinks up as you scroll down the page and goes to looking like this. So bringing that idea over to the homepage so that my menu is always going to be in the same place, which is just good UX and makes a lot of sense. So yeah, menus over here and you'll expand that and the menu items will drop down. But I decided I wanted to have it closed to start with because I want to encourage people to scroll the homepage rather than jump straight to my about page, which at this stage is a lot more boring. Um, I feel like you get a better sense of who I am and what I'm about by actually scrolling the homepage instead. So uh, keeping the menu closed encourages that a little bit more. Got a photo of me so you can see who the heck I am. It is my website after all. Um, this is my blog section. Then I had my video section. So mimicking the card style with the offset background card here on the YouTube video as well. And I thought that I'd play around with these when it came to um, actually what color they should be once I saw the actual thumbnails in it. Then there's my work. Again, using an overlappy style, but a little bit different from the cards just because um, I wanted to show four pieces of work rather than just two, as I had for the blog and videos. And I alternated colors here of the pink, the green, and the purple, um, bringing my brand colors through. And then at the bottom, I've just got this block with my podcast, speaking, and book. I really like the consistency in the titling here, the on the mic, on stage, on paper. I thought that was quite nice. And that, yeah, these icons with this little header really do explain what it's about without you having to read too in depth into it. I think the copy is actually really important in this design. Um, things like, instead of having the heading say my work, the heading for the work section says, I'm the marketing design lead at ConvertKit. So you get more of an understanding just from um, skimming the headings. Skimming this one, you can see, okay, I'm really transparent. I'm like, you know, sharing bits about my life on video. Even if you didn't know my channel, then um, just seeing this copy here gives you an idea. And that, yeah, you know what you, sort of topics you're going to find on my blog just from reading this headline, which is more useful than it just saying blog, you know, and then ended with my footer. There's a bunch of extra space down here, but this is the same footer that I had on my blog as well. So I decided not to bother redesigning this. I like it how it is. It gives people a chance to sign up to my email list, which um, makes sense to have at the bottom of the page, along with links to all of my social stuff. Now, what I didn't do in Figma was design out the tablet and mobile version, which I usually do on projects for work. And that is because I knew that I was going to be the one building this. And I know how stuff breaks down in Webflow and that Webflow kind of is desktop first, um, not mobile first. So it makes sense for me to be designing desktop first, if that makes sense. Uh, so I just decided that like I had it in my mind what I thought I would do for mobile and that I was just going to figure the rest out when it came to seeing how that performed. That's something that I tend to do when I'm designing for myself. 
So yeah, that is my homepage. Um, I suppose some advice I would give for you when you come to designing your own homepage for your personal website is, first of all, what is the first thing you want someone to know about you? What first impression do you want to give? That's why I had, hi, I'm Charlie, I'm a designer, as my headline, and then this little blurb here, because that's the thing that I want people to know right away. And if they don't scroll any further than that or whatever, then you know at least that's what they know. Um, also deciding what the purpose of your homepage is. So for a lot of you, that might be to get work. So your work is going to be front and center on your homepage, your process, things that are going to uh, tell an employer, potential employer, how you work and why you'd be good to hire as a designer. In my case, like I said, my goal was to showcase my content to get people uh, consuming my content for lack of a better word, I suppose. And so that's why I led with not only the fact that I have a blog and a YouTube channel, whatever, but I also had examples of the latest content there. So um, the idea is that my homepage is constantly updated whenever I'm publishing new things that keeps it fresh. And uh, it's always the place to go to get the latest of whatever content you're looking for from me. I hope you enjoyed seeing my design process and the decisions that I made as I was putting this homepage together and you know all the little things that went into it. Uh, in the next video, like I said, I'll be showing you how I build out this page using Webflow. So stay tuned for that. If you've got any questions about my process, anything that I didn't cover or went by too quickly because of this whole speed designing thing, then please feel free to ask down below in the comments. I'd be really happy to answer. But yeah, good luck with the design of your own homepage. If that's why you're watching this, if that's what you're working on, maybe you can have some fun with it. It doesn't always just have to be a grid of your work. There's other things we can do. So yeah. Thanks for watching, hope you have a good day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.